doing at a polar garden of Eden, an ocean ag advocate and pioneering swimmer wants you to think about the Ross Sea. This month, Lewis Pugh will travel to Antarctica to attempt five record-breaking swims in seawater so cold it is on the verge of turning into ice. He wants to raise awareness of the threats to this special location and also encourage people to support protecting it. Yeah, Lewis Pugh is in our London Bureau, he joins us now live. I, I, I read you're the UN patron of the ocean. First of all, tell us, what is that? Thank you very, very much. Well, I, I help spearhead their campaign to try and create marine protected areas around the world. Marine protected areas are effectively national parks in the seas. Mm. Okay, I, I want to ask you what you're going to be wearing. I thought you would at least be wearing a wetsuit, but I saw these photos of you. It would look like a Speedo. Um, how are you going to survive this swim? I mean, you're, you're going to be doing this five times. Yes, I'm going to be doing these swims in five different locations in the most incredible parts of the Ross Sea. Uh, as you said, I swim in a Speedo. I do that because I go around the world. I meet business leaders. I meet politicians. I'm asking for them to do absolutely everything they can to protect the environment. And often what I'm asking them to do is unpopular with shareholders or with the electorate. And so I'm asking the, for them to be courageous. In the same light, if I'm asking for them to be courageous, myself and my team, we must also be courageous. And swimming in a wetsuit just wouldn't, wouldn't cut the mustard. Yeah, that, that, that'd be a bit wimpy when it's like uh, zero degrees. Uh, yeah, you're, right? you're killing me here. Uh, first of all, for, for a lot of people who don't know, tell us about the Ross Sea and why it is so vitally Im important. It really is a, it's a laboratory in a way, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so and many people have never ever, ever heard of the Ross Sea. If you sail south from New Zealand, it's the most southern part of the world. So you s sail all the way south, nearly 3,000 kilometres, you come to Antarctica. It's the most southern ocean in the world. And, and scientists say that it is literally the last wilderness area on this planet. It's, for them, it's very crucially important because, for example, if you're a doctor, you need to know what a healthy patient looks like in order to be able to... To, to, be, to be able to, uh, uh, you know, look after them. In the same way, uh, this area is crucial for scientists because they have got a living laboratory there which they're able to study and be able to understand what a healthy ocean actually looks like because the rest of the oceans around the world are polluted, they're overfished, and they're obviously heavily impacted by climate change these days. I have to ask you how you are preparing for this. I know I read that in 2007 you were the first to swim across the North Pole and you lost feeling in your hands. I mean, are you concerned about... It took four months to get it back. That was <laughs> right, thing. to get it back. Um, yeah, I mean, is, is there going to be a team next to you make, monitoring you, make sure, making sure you don't fall into hypothermia? I mean, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, there must be lots of people... You know, watching this thinking, you know, why on earth would somebody want to put themselves into such danger for an ocean? Uh, I obviously prepare myself physically. I've done a lot of cold water swimming. I've uh, obviously tried to get my mind right. But the most important thing is, is not, not the body or the mind, but it's actually the heart. And what I mean by that is the actual reason why I'm doing that. I've, I feel so passionate about protecting the oceans. I've seen them change in, in just 30 years when I've been swimming. And, and, and that's what I've been focusing on now is, is, is focusing on, on uh, feeling very strong deep down inside. And I've got a great support team around me. I've got a doctor, I've got uh, uh, a coach, and, and, and we've been doing this now for the better part of 10 years. So while I am worried about it, five very, very hard swims in so short succession, I feel confident that we can pull this off. And, and, and very quickly, too, I mean, you're, you're obviously a man of great passion. This is a, an amazingly important thing that you're bringing to light. Do, do you have hope that the oceans can be saved? I mean, when you read about some of the horrible destruction that's going on in the oceans around the world and the pollution, do you think it can come back? Well, at the moment, everybody seems to be blaming each other. Some people are blaming the New Zealanders because they're the ones who started fishing in the Ross Sea. Others are blaming the Americans because they eat the fish from the Ross Sea. Others are blaming the Russians because they vetoed proposals for marine protected areas. Others are blaming the South Africans and the Chileans and the Argentinians who live close to the Ross Sea and saying, why didn't you stand up to protect this area? That's not going to solve the problem. The only way we're going to be able to solve this problem is all the nations around Antarctica and those with interest in there come together and they say, we need to protect this area for posterity. And I'm hoping now in, 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 in 2015 that all these nations will come together and will agree to get an effective marine protected area in the Ross Sea. And I'm very, very confident and hopeful about that.